Luckily, we at NAP have our own 3D guy. Please welcome back Corey Barker. Okay, so 3D. Everybody knows I'm having so much fun with 3D. Uh, when I found out CS3 was going to be coming with 3D, um, I got very excited, and then when it came out, I was uh, a little shocked because it was very limited. And what it was designed for was people who already were using 3D programs, then they could bring in their existing 3D files into Photoshop and paint on them and work on them and various things like that. But then CS4 came out, so and that's kind of where my demos come into play because they started adding features relevant to designers and even photographers to use. So what I'm going to do is actually open up a, a file here, a couple of files actually. That's, that's still awesome, but it doesn't say it. But. So I got a background element here, and I'm also going to open up another one. And since uh, we have the Olympics going on, I went ahead and created this um, the other day. I'm going to go and take this uh, logo here. It's a flat two-dimensional logo. I'm just going to take it and drag and drop it into that working background. So we'll go up to the title bar here, drag it over. There we go. And let's go ahead and center it in the document. And we'll go ahead and scale it down a little bit here. So I've got my 2D elements in place, and now I'm going to put them into 3D. So I'm going to first select this background element here that I've got. It's a little oval shape. I'm going to go into the 3D menu, new 3D postcard from layer. And it will put it into a 3D layer, as you see right there. I'm going to select the logo. Again, 3D. New 3D postcard from layer. And what it's doing is it's not uh, extruding it or doing anything like that. What it's doing is simply putting it into a 3D layer so I can manipulate it in 3D space. If I go down here and grab the 3D rotate tool, I can now manipulate this in three-dimensional space. But if you take it even further, what you can do is select both of those layers. I'm going to hold the shift key down, select both layers, then go to the 3D menu and choose Merge 3D Layers. What it's going to do is still keep these as two separate 3D elements, but combine them into a single 3D layer. So now if I take that same rotation tool and move the object, you can see it's spaced those elements apart from each other. They're still flat, but it's putting it in 3D space. So put it back in the original position. Now, if you go into the window menu, we now have the 3D panel, which allows us to manipulate those individual elements that are contained in that 3D layer. So if I go in here into the second item, which is the mesh section, you have these two uh, elements here, one for the background and one for that logo. So with the background element highlighted, go in here and choose the specific rotate tool inside the mesh panel. Inside the document, I'm going to hold the shift key down and rotate that forward. And now that shape is now perpendicular to my logo. So I'm going to grab this slide tool here in the panel. Again, hold the shift key down and just drag this down until we get the whole logo sitting right above that element. So I'm going to go in here and select the logo layer and use the scale tool and scale this down a little bit and reselect that background element and just nudge it up so it's just beneath that logo. And I'm not going to go ahead and scale that background element as well here. So if I move this out of the way, you'll see now if I rotate this in 3D, that element is now on top of that shape, which is cool so far, but I'm going to go into the lights section. They've added, uh, you can now add three-dimensional lights. So I'm going to go in here and add a spotlight. Let's go add a new spotlight. And you can see it shows up as a little tiny dot. Well, they were genius enough to figure out that it's hard to see the lights when they're in 3D. So if you turn on this little feature down here, at the bottom of the panel is a little light bulb with the eyeball on it. It is the wire mesh for the light. So now I can use the slide and rotate tools here to slide the light out and position it up and shine the light on my logo. Back to slide it up a little bit more. And I can widen the scope of the light by increasing the fall off. And there we have that. So now I can see that it's telling this uh, item here is checked on for creating shadows. But we don't see the shadows because we're not in the right render mode. It's, right now it's in kind of a draft mode. So uh, I've gone ahead and set it up where the, it's going to cre create the shadows. But I'm going to go into the materials section here. And down here you see an item for reflectivity. I'm going to go in there and add, may I set that to 25. And now to see all these elements in play, go into the first uh, icon here, which is the scene, and then go into the preset and choose Ray Traced. 
and you can see it's casting a shadow and putting a reflection in that surface. Now, to see it a little bit better, let's do this. Let's go ahead and rotate this object. Kind of do it like that. That reflection looked like it was going to be a little bit too harsh. Let's take it down to about 15. And then once again, choose Ray Trace, and there we can see the reflection and the shadow being cast. You can, and if you see the shadow is a little too harsh, go in here into the uh, light section and just go to softness and maybe set it to five. And it will take it a second. And it can soften that logo a little bit. Now, I'm gonna do one more thing and I hope this works. Man, let's grab a brush. And let's, uh, let's go on a new layer here for a moment. Little brush trick here. Here we go. So let's do this. Do it like that. Actually, oh, where'd it go? In the shape dynamics, uh, yeah, I want to have pin pressure on. That's fine. But I don't want it to do the size shader or angle. There we go. So I'm painting on that layer, but if you reselect on that uh, 3D layer, and paint on this logo element, it'll actually render on that 3D element. And notice it's rendering the shadow or the reflection in the bottom there. Ooh. So notice how I created that reflection when I painted that stroke in 3D. Isn't that cool? So that is the new 3D NCS4, and it's very cool stuff. So there you go.